with elixirs today. They are going to have a little bit of sweetener in them, um, either honey or maple syrup. Uh, what that does is it's a taxi driver that drives the nutrition into the body. So rather than consider sweet to be the destination we're trying to go, uh, we would consider it to be the taxi driver. Now we can do a lot of these in an umami or savory fashion as well. And then we're also going to add the other kind of dopamine hit we get is from fats. You know, obviously yum cream kind of fills us up and actually when we move into more ketosis type um, body, body burn, uh, we actually can be healthier. So we're going to play on the fat spectrum a little bit too with MCT oil and or a grass fed butter. So I just want to, before I get started, is there any um, vegans who don't do butter here? Because I, and that's okay, raise your hand if you are. One, two, just two of us, okay. Three, um, and what about honey? Anybody who doesn't do honey? One, two, okay, great. Well, what we've done, we brought some maple syrup and MCT oil. Um, that's kind of what we normally do these for, for bigger groups, because we're not always, those are the most, uh, I guess, fluid ways of making sure that it doesn't affect anybody's um, dietary choices. Other options you can do for sweetener here are things like monk fruit sweetener or any of the keto sweeteners. I'm not a huge fan of those because they trick the body into thinking sweet and then setting up for sweet digestion, but actually it's usually a protein that they're getting. So in a way it's a what I call a crime against wisdom. Nothing right and nothing wrong about it, but um, just know that if we put in, it's sort of like soy bacon. You're like, oh, it tastes like <laughs> soy bacon. <laughs> um, but uh, so the reality is, is we can do any of these types of drinks really very much um, without any of this stuff. But when we add in a little bit of fat and a little bit of sweet, we end up kind of one playing into the like, this is so yummy, I want to drink this every day, make this a, a ritual. And two, we end up adding some calorie content and driving the ingredients further in. One of the reasons why the whole uh, bulletproof thing kind of took off um, is that high fat slows down the absorption of the caffeine and allows it to titrate into the system for a longer period of time, giving us less of a spike and a crash. Um, so using fat as a way to buffer ingredients and increase their absorption into the brain and the nervous system is a great strategy for how, for as a taxi driver. So I'm a big believer in kind of creating different vehicles to drive in herbal medicine. Um, yes? MCT is mostly derivative of coconut, and really it is uh, medium chain triglycerides. And so what it is, is it ends up being a, the, the exact type of fat that crosses the blood brain barrier easily. Um, you may not know this, but all of you are fat heads. Um, there's more fat in the brain than on the body often. And it depends on our, our body, but, but we need, our brains require a lot of fat. So to get across the blood brain barrier, the fastest way in there is using a fat taxi driver. And MCT oil, that type of oil is kind of a medium chain one, whereas the saturated oils that we see, and the reason I choose grass-fed butter is because it contains a type of oil called conjugated, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. And your body will more readily uptake into um, fat cells, CLA, than it will any other type of oil. So for people who are trying to lose weight, actually putting CLA, you can get it in a capsule or you can get it in grass-fed butter. It only is from butter from animals that actually eat grass. Grains don't produce CLA in, in animal milks. So really grass-fed is, is why we would choose that. Um, and that would be another type of oil that works more like a storage vehicle versus a active oil the way the MCT would. Other oils we can think about are things like your omega essential fatty acids. Now those are polyunsaturated oils, which means they have lots of double bonds. They go rancid easily. We gotta keep them in the fridge. We won't put them in a drink like this. They might be something we could put into a salad dressing or a cold type of um, brew. If we're gonna make a cold type of elixir. But in the case of making hot elixirs, we wanna use something that's more saturated if we're gonna use a fat. Of course, you could also use like coconut milk or almond milk or oat milk or any other kind of like nut based fat um, to help blend this up too. Coconut oil is okay? Coconut oil is okay. What MCT oil is, is a derivative out of coconut. So it's kind of extracted the medium chain, um, not as much, not the entire coconut. So you get... If I have money, I use that. If I have money, I use that. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, coconut oil. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So you're going to get lots of MCT oil in the coconut oil, but you also get that coconut flavor. It's a little different um, from that. Now, coconut's an interesting one because, you know, back in the 80s, coconut was, was considered bad. And then it became, well, uh, coconut's helping with thyroid condition and, and metabolism of all these Polynesian people when they, when they eat it. And then coconut became really good for, for helping with weight loss. And then it's gone back and forth in our dietary, like, I'll say, belief system. Um, and now we see coconut in everything. And so, to me, I'm starting to become more concerned about coconut again because it's in, it's in everything. And so I'm not 100% sure that I came from a Polynesian island where coconuts grew. So I think about my, my heritage when I think about my diet. And I believe that it's much more likely that I didn't come from a Polynesian island. Um, even though if I did live on an island like that, the number one and only food I would need to survive is coconut. It could, it could do everything I would need. I could build my house. I could feed myself from sugars, fats, proteins, um, electrolytes. So it's an amazing, amazing plant. Um, but I feel like it's a little bit overused in our world. So anyway, something to think about when it comes to what choices we make to optimize our health is seasonal as well as our heritage, as well as um, what can be available locally, right? These are all the things. What kind of season is it right now? Spring. 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 What does that mean? That means bitters. spring, yeah, bitters, sours, greens, uh, salad season, right? It's season to like get into the, the kind of the greens. This would be naturally from a Chinese medicine perspective, the liver season. We would want to optimize detoxification and regeneration. So hence, this would be a perfect season to do a cleanse. Now, if I was to take this format, really what we're talking about today mostly, we're gonna do two different types of formats, but it's, it's a template for you to then take that template and in a way biohack what would be best for your own health condition. So I could make a anti-anxiety elixir. I could make a digestive elixir. I could make an immune elixir. I could make a woman's moon elixir, you know? So we can take this template and start to play with um, what is our health needs. So if I was thinking about spring, I might go along the lines and be like, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Liver and kidney work and digestive. So I could take this digestive tea, add in the bitters, the cleanse, herbs, and maybe something that's anti-inflammatory to get the liver moving like a golden milk and blend it all up with my fat and my sweetener of choice. And not only is it gonna taste yummy, it's gonna have that deep therapeutic benefit because it's gonna drive it into the system. And I'm able to, instead of taking a whole bunch of capsules of things that are in a way devoid from connection because I haven't put any energy into them and. And you may have heard of placebo. Of course you've heard of placebo. One of the things that we recognize that what placebo is, is actually our faith and our interaction with the healing. There's an old saying that like, the shaman 200 miles away is far better than the one in my village. And it really has to do with the placebo of going on the hero's journey to find the shaman, right? So we can take that analogy and put it into how am I activating and being a proactive part of my health path? What am I doing to engage and interact with the healing process? And in a way, we can see that that is part of the whole placebo phenomenon. So part of it will be, am I, am I connecting with my environment? Um, am I tuning into my season? Am I working with the waves of the cycles? And in this case, optimally right now, I would wanna work on cleansing and just kind of be in tune with that rhythm of, regenerating and rebooting the system so that I can be in my most vital state as the summer months come. In a seasonal approach to health, the spring is a cleanse season, the summer is a build season, the fall is a cleanse season, the winter is a build. And so we do this wax on, wax off, kind of karate kid method of moving through the cycles. Of course, we have these same cycles lunar, of course, we have these same cycles daily, right? There's a fractal kind of uh, similarity throughout those cycles. So. Um, from a holistic lens, this is how we want to start to structure and look at how we're building our health path. So today we're going to start with a with that basic blend that I was just mentioning. We're going to start with kind of a liver de digestive anti-inflammatory drink. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. And so why I mentioned the whole fat and um, uh, sugar thing is I've definitely I've been reading 
um, Gabor Mate's work lately, um, The Myth of Normal, and he really just breaks down the whole dopamine response to our food. And it's really had me come to this like, aha, this is part of the reason why crafting an elixir, like instead of like trying to be against that natural, the body's natural uh, desire to like feel good um, and say, no, I can't do this. I must eat straight quinoa and lentils because I was told those were good for me. Nothing wrong with that. I love quinoa and lentils. Um, but to me, that's a winter storage food, not a spring regeneration food, right? So. Um, I'm going to play into that. And so we're going to start, the first one we'll do, definitely the MCT oil and um, the maple syrup. And because we have a couple of people that, that are you know, more in line with not using these two ingredients, we might just make one with these um, and then make a second batch with, without them. So you can kind of have a, a choice of them. Um, and I'll do that with the more immune building blend. Okay, so basic template. We're going to start with a, a blender. We want to put in some kind of water. Think about tea. Tea is what I would call water inspired by the power of plants, mm -hmm. right? So it's water as well as the knowledge the, and the intelligence of, of the great design of the world around us. And so we're going to start with the digestive tea. And so this tea is our calm belly tea. Um, and really this has meadow sweet in it. It's one of my favorite, favorite herbs. This is a herb um, that has the ability to really work with stomach acid, um, with our, our stomach acid balance. Whether you're hypoacidic, hypoacidic or hyperacidic, this is gonna help to regulate and balance the stomach acid. It's very good for stomach ulcers. It's amazing for setting up the digestion. If there's painful digestion or cramping, meadow sweet is amazing. This also has fennel which has that nice anise licorice fennel kind of flavor, very good for gas and any kind of bloat in the system. Uh, it also has some peppermint, which is another bit of a digestive, more of an uplifting digestive. It's got some ginger in it, which is a circulatory stimulant, um, obviously working with cramping and with circulation. And I think there's also marshmallow in it. Marshmallow is anti-inflammatory, very good for things like irritable bowel or any type of inflammation in the gut. So we're gonna start with a tea. In this case, what we've done is we've stacked water with the best type of ingredients we can to work with our belly. Now, when I make these at home, we will make one, when I say full Vitamix, about 100 and, or 1,500 mils. Me and my partner will make one like that. And then we'll each get a nice big full cup and a little top up refill. And that becomes our like morning beverage or mid afternoon beverage. I will say that by doing this, I found at Harmonic Arts, um, from a operational efficiency perspective, on the days that we made elixirs for the team in the middle of mid afternoon, we were much higher productivity. <laughs> so, so just think about the mid afternoon blues. Um, instead of reaching for some kind of snack, maybe make yourself a drink. And in the time it takes you to brew tea, to put the water on, to heat it up put the, the herbs into the water, you can stack your Vitamix in that same amount of time with all the ingredients you might put into it. And then when your tea's brewed, you just pour it in, blend, you're done. So it's not like it takes longer than brewing tea to do this. Now, of course, for me to talk it through, here we are, we're 15 minutes in and we still haven't even put anything in the Vitamix. How long is this gonna take? Okay, so how I like to, when I do a full Vitamix, I tend to be more intuitive I did bring a scale that I'm not gonna use, and we could actually like measure out the ingredients we wanna do, and you might be that person. You're like, I wanna have um, an exact science to this, or I wanna have consistency across the board. To me, I tend to be more intuitive, and what I've found, to really make a good, strong, hearty elixir, I'm going to cover the bottom two blades of my Vitamix with powder and other ingredients, and then add in my tea up to 1500 mils. That's how I, like to do it, and I know if I've got it kind of covered, then, then I've got a nice strong one. So we're gonna start with our golden milk, um, and this is a turmeric-based anti-inflammatory drink. It's got a little bit of white pepper in it, and white pepper is more bioactive in the pepperine content, which activates the curcumin in the system. And here's a really fun little fact when I was researching pepper, I just thought this is cool, I'd like to share it. Part of the reason why pepper is on the table and why pepper and spice is part of our diet is that actually pepperine 
extends the microvilli in the small intestinal tract just a little bit. So it's almost like all those little kind of hairs that absorb your food, it sort of like perks their heads up a little, little bit, giving you more surface area to the small intestinal tract, increasing the absorption of everything. So putting a little bit of pepper in your food actually makes you uh, have more surface area in your small intestinal tract to absorb all the things. So it works really well with curcumin and turmeric, but turmeric also does a great job of having an anti-inflammatory effect all through the joints and the, co uh, the connective tissue, as well as the brain if we blend it with fat, if we m mix the turmeric with fat. So pepper, turmeric, fat, golden milk um, kind of thing. So that this one also has a little bit of ashwagandha, it's got turkey tail, which is another anti-inflammatory and really anti-oxidant uh, digestive support of mushroom, has some liver support, and is one of these immune modulating mushrooms. So the turkey tail is our most commonly found West Coast medicinal. It's everywhere in the forest. I call it hiker's mushroom because it's all over. So in this case, we're going to do three, no, we'll just do two. Two scoops, I'm not quite covering the bottom, but that's okay. This one's a little strong, I know that. So if I make it too, eh, we'll put a little more in. <laughs> but if I make it too strong, oh, and I did want to use, nah, we'll use this one, that's okay. Turmeric will dye your Vitamix. <laughs> this will be yellow tomorrow, and the next day, and further ever forward, um, just, just to know. You can kind of scrub it out. Um, okay, we got that. And then what we're going to do is we would normally add in, like, in this case, I think what I'll do is just add in a, like, a, a good tablespoon of our MCT oil. Oh, I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half. And then I would add probably a little less than that of maple. Maple is sweeter than honey. And so really you need to be careful with it. And I tend to do this to taste. So I'll add one scoop of maple. And then from here, I can start to play. So let's just say I wanted to add a bit of extra cardamom or cinnamon or any other kind of spices. Or maybe I have some other um, powders. Maybe I'm like, I'm really into maca. I can throw maca in there. Maybe I want to have some bee pollen. Maybe I'll throw that in there. What I don't put in here is like spirulina and chlorella and like kind of super greens that aren't going to do well with heat. But superfoods, mesquite, lacuma, maca, cacao, um, these are all awesome upgrade ingredients, as well as spices. Um, how do we spice up our blends? So in this case, we're keeping it really, really simple. But because we're doing a digestive blend, I'm going to also play with some herbal bitters. Do you guys know about bitters? So bitter stimulates the gallbladder, almost like a sponge, it sort of wrings it out and squeezes out for better digestion of fats, better digestion of, of um, oils. So if you ever get that greasy feeling after a meal, take some herbal bitters. Great way to support digestion. Um, we could also, we do a couple of different digestive tinctures. This is my favorite, and I just, I tend to um, like it all the time. Anytime I'm feeling uh, crampy or digestively not well, um, I'll take this. Even on an empty stomach, sometimes I take bitters. But especially when I go to like a trade show, like the we have a Canadian Health Food Association show where you get all kinds of weird gluten-free pizzas and samples of this and that. And like at the end of that, you're like, oh my God, what did I just, why did I take those samples? I feel like crap. I should have just eaten a real meal. Um, bitters, best thing ever. What kind of herb is in that? This is a really fairly complicated blend, actually. Um, the main active bitters are gentian and arch angelica, um, but it also has things like fennel and peppermint and cardamom in it. It's got juniper berries in it. Um, so yeah, you know what I will do? Um, I'll pass this around, and if you guys want to try any tinctures, the best way to do it is you have this little divot in your hand, like this. See how it sits like that? And just for hygienic sake, try it like that. Okay, on your own hand. I'll pass the tincture around. You can try the bitters. I think it's amazing. It's one of my favorites. And so we're going to put three droppers full of bitters in. How would that differ from something you're using, the bitter trend in cocktails? Yeah, exactly. This on soda water, amazing. 
this is a really nice bitters. Now, people are afraid of bitter. It's the one flavor that people like, well, shiver at. And, and for good reason, because um, bitter in nature tells us, whoa, 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 this is not food. <laughs> you know, this is like potentially hard on your system if you eat too much of it. Do not eat something massively bitter. At the same time, a little bit of bitter really helps to stimulate the body and tone the body and really, in a sense, like I said, wringing out the sponge. It activates the liver. It helps the detoxification pathway. It settles the digestion, right? The Swedish bitters or German bitters originally were kind of designed for people who ate too much food and then wanted to drink beer later and couldn't drink beer because they were too full. If they had a cup of bitters first, now they can drink beer again because they're settled their digestion. Now I'm not suggesting after all of these elixirs, you're like, wow, just take some bitters and I can go home and drink beer again. <laughs> um, but anyway, three droppers full. I'll pass this around. Uh, choose your own adventure. I'm not, it's not mandatory to try, obviously. Anything that we pass around. Yeah, mm, love it, okay. And then, in this case, like, if I'm really going digestively, I may think about, because I'm like, okay, it's spring season, it's liver season, I might go and say, you know what, let's add some extra liver herbs in there too. Um, so this might be a blend where I'm like, okay, dandelion and burdock and, um, and some of these others. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of our liver TLC in. And in a sense, what I'm making is a bit of an anti-inflammatory spring cleansing um, elixir in that sense. So I'm gonna add those in. And then if I was like, okay, how would I play with some of the mushrooms? You know, I, I, I know that chaga's super anti-inflammatory. Um, so, and it's got a lot of antioxidants. If I'm looking at digestive health overall, if I've got a lot of inflammation, I might add a little tiny bit of chaga in here. So that'd be another one I could start to add in. I might add in cardamom. I didn't bring any cinnamon, but I would probably put that in. So we can start to stack. The idea of this template is not to make the exact elixir that I'm making tonight, but to like have this format that you can start to play with. And my uh, invitation is that at the end of the day, if you like this kind of template, you really look at setting aside some of your um, financial wealth to invest in a blender kitchen, in a sense of like things to really stack up your blender with and start to create that as a meal a day. And the way I rationally work it out in my mind, if I go down to two meals instead of three meals a day and have one awesome elixir, not only am I getting better health and better nutrition, I'm giving my body the digestive reset and rest to, to be able to absorb all that better. So it actually, not only is it better for me, it's more cost effective <laughs> than eating three empty calorie meals. Um, okay, so that's that. That's all we would need to do. And then we start to blend in our tea. Um, I, did I, I feel like I, did I even put any of this in? I don't think I did. Which is that? The liver one? Yeah, yeah. I did? Okay, good. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, I'm talking here. Um, okay, so from here, one thing to always do is to make sure that we taste it first before we give it to others. So I'm going to um, give it a try and see how this goes. I added a one tablespoon of um, maple. I feel like, oh, is it out? You can not take the lid off. Yeah. Some of the herbs cream out into the tea. All right, now another thing, really quick, Blender 101, never fill your Vitamix full, <laughs> especially with hot liquids. And if you're gonna do hot liquids in your blender, start on the lowest heat possible. Start, or sorry, not lowest heat, lowest number. So let's just see if this thing's not plugged in. So we start on like a one, right? Okay. And never put the lid on. That's another rule with blending. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just seeing if you guys are listening. You're like, okay, I wrote that down. Never put the lid on. 
My wife loves that when I do that. She's like, oh, what's with the roof? <laughs> Thanks for blending. <laughs> okay, so we start low and then we build it up. If you start high on a blender, now one thing that's really cool that happens with fat when you put it on a high blend is it actually blends right into the teeth. So butter or oil can easily blend right into the teeth. So I didn't add the chaga. Well, I did mention it, but didn't add it. I like the mushroom mixer. That's a mushroom. Yeah, that was one of the anti-inflammatory mushrooms that we could add in. Um, and or we could add in, we could add medicinal mushrooms into any of these. Recommend not putting in the whole kitchen sink. Wouldn't it be at some point? Yeah, there's a kitchen returns and conflict. And I will say that uh, this is definitely something that uh, we want to start to like kind of as, as we build these blends, like figure out what is our best mix. Don't put in the whole kitchen sink for sure. At the same time, it's it's like a multi herbal, so don't be afraid of stacking 30 ingredients either. Um, really don't. Tonight, you're going to try uh, at least I'll say a good good 100 different kinds of plants, you know, over the course of this. Hopefully, maybe not, maybe more like 60 or 70. But, you know, in this drink alone, you know, we've got, I think, 12 or 13 herbs in that bitters, uh, five herbs in the liver, uh, seven different ingredients in the golden milk, plus the, like, we're, we're, already, we're already stacking 30 by the time we kind of get through it. This is too good for you guys. I'm sorry, I'm done. No, just kidding. You're going to like it. Easy and yummy. So our first, yeah, I'm going to have a little more. Um, now, logistically, the challenge here is our cup situation. And are we going to reuse cups? Are we going to use small cups? Um, so from a golden milk perspective, it's going to stain your first cup. So we, um, what do you think? Should we start with the? The small cups? I mean, I, I don't know. I just, um, do some of you, yeah, you have cups, so, okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, let's see if it makes it all the way around. That would be our golden milk, and then. Okay, yeah, we've got, we got loads of, here, I'll put, I'll just put a, anybody who doesn't have a cup. Do you want me to, yeah, we can do it in the blender? Or do you want to put it into two and have two people pass it around? Okay. How's that feel? Yep. Huh? Probably, probably good. Can go to the back. You don't need to touch that. It'll just pour out. And then if we don't make enough, I'll just make another batch. No problem. Mm -hmm. So this is gentle, simple. This isn't like a crazy, crazy elixir. Um, we're going to stack up from here. Okay. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be just really simply taking an adaptogenic tea and making an immune elixir, right? So this one's kind of anti-inflammatory, detoxifying for the liver, stimulating the liver um, and digestive. The coconut tastes a little strong to me. Yep. I'm not a huge fan of the coconut as much, um, and, but that's okay. It's in there. Um, <laughs> that's my own personal um, flavor. I prefer the butter or some kind of other fat. Um, but we are going to go with this immune one. What we're going to do is take a tea called Adapt, which is this one. And this is all adaptogenic herbs. Um, these, this, most of the herbs in this next blend come out of Chinese medicine. Um, these are all TCM type herbs. Ashwagandha being one from Ayurvedic, but also like reishi, uh, calming down the mind, grounding and in, in, in immune supportive. Eleuthero, Siberian ginseng, um, that is again another energy herb, tonic herb. Rhodiola is like the Viking stamina herb. Um, faux tea is really a longevity herb out of Asia and the, the old saying with faux tea, it's, they call it um, he shu wu which really means Mr. He's black shiny hair. And Mr. He's 150 years old, and he has this beautiful head of black shiny hair because he takes faux tea, in a sense. So, um, and then shizanderberry, which is the, the kind of the fable around this, is if you eat shizanderberries for 100 days, 
Your skin will be as clear as a porcelain doll, and all your internal organs will be renewed. So, Shazandra Berry is this like herb of beauty and renewing and gently cleansing. I'm gonna give that a rinse. Yeah, did everyone get some? I know there was just one I'm sick left, but I got you. It's okay. 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 Um, I can make more of any of them. Well, we're gonna we're gonna run through these as much as as fast as possible, and then we'll maybe if we have enough time, we'll make another kind of like what's everyone's favorite? What do you guys want to play with? So anyway, um, and then the last one in here is um, holy basil. Um, so just a really nice adaptogenic blend for building resilience. So same thing. We've got the adapt in the tea urns. The reason we have them here is because we made what's called a decoction, and that is your double double boil in trouble, right? ear of herb and wing of mushroom and all the other good stuff. So just like the old witch's cauldron, making a decoction is when we lightly simmer a tea with roots and barks and be hard berries and mushrooms, we want to do a decoction. So that's what we're going to do. We got that. We're going to turn this into a hot chocolate. So we're going to take uh, our medicinal mushroom hot chocolate, really simply, same kind of thing. We'll take two or three good scoops of the mushroom hot chocolate. If you were going to use a butter, would you also just, um, you know, do a, a tablespoon, a spoonful? Of butter? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would do the same kind of thing um, with the butter. Probably for one of these blends, I would cut off like about that much, a good tablespoon of butter, it depends. And so sometimes the other way I could do this is instead of adapt tea, I could use like a coffee, or I could use um, any almost any kind of tea. I, I I really like the adapt, but here we've got five mushroom drinking chocolate. This is about 10% mushrooms, but we're gonna stack that up. We're gonna triple stack the mushrooms. One of the things is a mushroom tincture, and um, by taking a tincture versus a powder, we're making the alcohol soluble terpene compounds and other antioxidants that polyphenols and ergosterols and all these fun fancy words to say, uh, we're making those more bioavailable. How so much of the powder did you put in? I put in um, exactly... Blade work? Yeah, like right, this time I covered the bottom okay. uh, with it. So I'm gonna say I, I if I, uh, I think I put in about 40 grams, I'm gonna say probably. I, I, I did a good amount somewhere in there for the whole Vitamix worth. And I'm gonna take three droppers of our five mushroom tincture. This one is great. I love, um, one of the things that's really nice about our mushrooms is they're full fruiting bodies. They have the full personality of the mushroom and they're really some of the best extractions. So I'm gonna pass this one around again. Another opportunity for you to connect in with the medicine and try out the medicinal mushrooms. If you don't know much about medicinal mushrooms, um, just know that these are what I would consider the ennobled species of the fungal kingdom. They are the dolphins and the whales of the mushroom world. They have some, they've developed the best strategies to um, deal with pathogens on the planet, and they have the most immune modulating properties. Now, each one has its own personality, chaga being much more anti-inflammatory, like we mentioned, and good for um, partial cancer and that kind of thing. But a lot of them have anti-tumoral effects Turkey tail being the most heavily studied that way. Reishi being really grounding for the body. Lion's mane has become the most popular, really for, I can't actually remember. Do you guys know what lion's mane's for? No, for memory <laughs> and cognitive function. Um, and just really helping with any kind of neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis. Um, whereas turkey or cordyceps is one that I think a lot of people aren't um, using as much as they should. This is one that's really amazing for pre or pro, um, post workout, but also oxygenation to the blood. And I see a lot of women who are suffering from adrenal burnout in their middle life. This is like the mushroom that really helps save them. So I've seen a lot of people with great success from using cordyceps. So we're doing an adaptogen hot chocolate. Because of that, I'm gonna add a little extra cordyceps in there. Maybe not. Whoa. <laughs> Stuck. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, right? No, I think it's just um, we've used it lots of the hot water. There we go. All right, fine. Just be stubborn. One dropper full of cordyceps. And I added in a bit of the five mushroom. Now, within this, because I'm doing the adaptogens, 
You know, I could play with something for like, depending on where I'm at, like, do I have anxiety? You know, is this something that I suffer from? Maybe I'm going to add in some Nervines to this. Um, am I feeling a little bit of winter blues? And this is like, oh, I just can't get my metabolism going. You mentioned that, I think, in terms of that... that uh, yeah, the BioShield. Was that part of it? Uh, it we could. We could do... Um, I think I've got a bit of BioShield here. Yeah, we, we could add one for, like, like that type of thing. No, I don't think I brought that. Oh, yeah. BioShield, yeah. Okay. Um, but what I would do is maybe, in this case, we're going to go with um, like sort of mind and mood uplifted spirits. Um, and this is just going to kind of give us a little bit more lightness to our day, um, wake us up, but also deal with the kind of clouds. Now, of course, it's a beautiful sunny day, but we're still suffering. Winter was so long this year. Must take my herbs. So I'll just give a little tune in. One other thing about this method that I'm sharing with you around is that when we take micro doses of things, our taste buds have to tune in much deeper and we pick up the etherical body of the herb, sort of the spirit of the herb. So taking micro, micro amounts of things makes you become more acute in your sensory perception, therefore tune in at a deeper level. So really, it's not like bigger, better, stronger sometimes. Uh, for those people who are actually sensitive to energetics, Microdosing of herbs is, is a really powerful way to start to connect with the whole more wisdom of herbs. And from a philosophical perspective, I'm a big believer that our bodies heal themselves and that the herbs and the plants we put into them are teachers. They are guides along our path towards healing. They show us through their chemistry and their way of showing up how to deal with and be more strategic and resilient to some of the things that are causing us imbalances. So they don't heal us but they teach us how to heal better. So by tuning into the intelligence of plants, by working with the intelligence of plants, we become more intelligent ourselves in that sense, and we become better healers. So let's add some uplifted spirits. I really like this tea or this tincture. Um, this one has a bit of uh, thermogenic herbs. It's got the bladderwrack, which helps to stimulate the thyroid and get more and the metabolism move, moving. It's got a bit of St. John's Wort in it, which is kind of just a happy sunshine in a bottle. Um, this one has the Eleuthero, which is also in our Adapt um, tea for more of that adrenal energy drive. And then what else? I remember we have, um, yeah, Lemon Balm and Skull Cap. And those are just, and a little rosemary too. What is this one called? This is called Uplifted Spirits. I'll pass it around. You guys can totally give it a try. And yeah. I think more. you were going to be microdosing um, instead of doing the thing in the blender. Could you just do it in uh, some other tea you liked or some plain old water? Just for sure. It? Yeah. So the other way, like here's here's how I like to take tinctures. Is I I would do one little drop, try that. But maybe if it was mine, I'd probably be like, <laughs> right? And then. I would take my physiological dose later, right? So I still would take a full dropper full or a dropper or two, but I'd start with just tuning into what it is I'm taking. Think of myself as a sommelier, tuning into the fine, you know, notes of like shoe leather and cigar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whatever the, 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 that's not the flavors, but you, you get it. I'm just seeing if you're listening again. <laughs> okay, so I've stacked those. Um, in this case, I'm going to go again with, we're going to go with our, our base. You have butter in this one, aren't you? I was going to do butter. We have a few, are you guys okay with butter? You're not. You're, you're dairy intolerant. Um, why don't I make two of this, okay? So I'm going to do, yeah, we're going to make two. I'm going to do one with butter and one without. The, the, the non-buttered one. The non-buttered one, I'll just make, um, okay, same thing. We're doing the five mushroom. And we did a little bit of cordyceps. And I need, yep. Just sort of like based on what Tanya said with that tea. So I have the cordyceps one I just made today. And I put it in like my peppermint tea every morning. Yep. Should I be taking it like kind of like on my hand before instead? Or like um, putting it 
Yeah. You know, like they come with a dropper. So really the idea is, is we're doing it on your hand in order for like the group so that like, you guys aren't like, hey, I'll go. and just like eating our, our droppers. Um, but you know, when it's your own home one, my suggestion, this is how I do it. I ditched the dropper and it's a sipping cordial. But, um, <laughs> but no, but the idea would be that you, like that, the droppers have a little marker on them to, to measure like your actual dosage. So yeah, you could put it into like a little shot of tea or just in your, yeah, straight in your mouth. So um, can you bring the uplifted spirits back? And I'm just gonna put it into this one and we'll do MCT in this one. Uh, I would do about three droppers full. Yeah, I I, um, I would say, yeah, for sure. Um, but I'm, I'm a bigger fan of like, I feel like one of the challenges that people in North America anyway, is it, it chronically we underdose um, with our, like, well, the herbs don't work. Well, you're, what are you taking? Like a half a gram a day, you know? Yeah, no, they might not work. Um, a true, like from a herbal medicine perspective, like you want somebody to be drinking two or three like bottoms full a day to see that physiological effect of a tea. But here we're more like, ah, oh, I'm gonna sip on chamomile in the evening. I'll have one little cup, right? But if you really wanted chamomile to, to like be a nervine, you'd make it as concentrated as possible and you'd, you'd, you'd take a, a good dose. Now, of course, that might make you pee if you're drinking at nighttime. Um, but, but yeah, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, so three droppers full, there's about three mils. That is about right for most herbal tinctures. Um, but yeah, okay. So this one has the MCT. We're gonna put, there's already a little bit of sweetener in the five mushroom drinking chocolate. So we're just gonna put a very tiny bit into each one. No, actually there's a little bit more there because it's pretty. And then in this case, I will do one with butter. This one already has the MCT in it. And you guys want the, the, the tin foil in there as well? <laughs> Makes sense, right? Just kidding. So that looks like a lot of butter, right? It is. <laughs> um, so, and I'm, I'm maybe exaggerating for you all to like, um, and then that's it. So really the same method of, of, a, of a fat uh, to help the absorption. And then from here, like if I was at home with a hot chocolate, I'm a huge fan of cardamom. Totally gonna put cardamom in my, in my hot chocolate for, for myself, um, but, or maybe cinnamon, you know, there might be some other things. Again, some of those other superfoods like the mesquite or the lacuma, those are really yummy. Um, tocotrinols are really good. There's, you can start to play, like in this case, I might go collagen in this one. Um, so it just depends on what your, your preference is. Oh, and I did the, yeah. Okay, come on, pump pot. It's like I'm... All right. What was the rule? Always fill the Vitamix yeah. super full. I think that's what I said earlier. No. Okay, we'll do this one first. And start on seven or one? One. Seven. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I turned my kids in purple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've done it too. So I filled it a little full. You see it coming right up to the top. All right. Oh, yeah. Again, it's too good for you guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to take this home with me. Oh, no. It's great. It's perfect. So we'll pass that one around. Maybe I'll take a little bit more before it goes. And then, um, did this get a little rinse out? Yes, it did. Okay, maybe you guys split that up. Mm. Yum. And then I'll make this one. This one has butter in it. So there's about three or so people who are doing the MCT oil one. They're gonna get a bigger cup. Yeah, no problem. 
Now there's like, everyone wants no butter. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay. No, but again, we can make these. You know, I think we need a little bit more. Okay. I feel like because I made a little bit more. Or give me a quick second. I know. Um, no, when it comes to like our, so this is the, yeah, I didn't try that here. Give me a little. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. So if I'm working with someone who's immune compromised, would I suggest using a tincture over a powder? Yes. Yeah, um, I will say that not in the case of our medicinal mushrooms, because the powders that we are, have aren't really powders at all. They're more like a powder of a, ju of a tincture or like a juice powder of a tincture kind of thing. So these aren't like just powdered mushrooms. This is a eight to one extract of, of uh, mushrooms. So basically taken from a tincture and then dehydrated down to the powder. So it's instantly absorbed in water. So these are pretty potent the way they are. Same with the ones that we have in our capsules. So, yes, tinctures are more easily digestible and you're getting a few of those other bioactives that the alcohol is doing a great job of pulling out. Um, so in the case of if it was like ashwagandha root versus ashwagandha or root powder versus ashwagandha tincture, yes, I'd say that's the case. If it's like a raw herb versus a um, tincture, the tincture is always going to be more potent, better absorption, um, easier on the digestion. But if it's like a, like, a tea concentrate or a tincture concentrate powder like this is then that's like like this chaga you can just put this in water and it's instant chaga tea like it's like add water and stir it's kind of like instant coffee um, but with a medicinal mushroom okay so uh, what um, there's lots of ways to purify water what do you start with what kind of water yeah well in my you know at like where I live, I have a, uh, I live on, a, we have our, our own well water and it's, it's beautiful water. So from there, I put it through a whole system with UV and, and um, kind of just a, a carbon charcoal filter system. That's what I do at home. Water is an interesting one because it, uh, every, like there's, it can hold, I don't know if anybody's looked at Dr. Emoto's work or heard of that, <coughs> where he, He's frozen water with different emotional um, elements, like with the words, I hate you, you make me sick, and the water crystals look weird and like kind of like gross versus I love you, thank you so much, yeah. and the water crystals look beautiful. And so he really showed like the intelligence of water to pick up things. And when it comes to like city water, um, we, we know that just based on like some of the things that don't always filter out, um, we can be challenged by. So. It's, there's not a real, I don't want to give a perfect answer because one of the things I'm also a real, really aware of is that we can get really um, extreme to one side of a spectrum and um, create anxiety around things that actually is worse for our health than the actual things we're afraid of. Um, and so just knowing to balance those ratios of like, choose the best but also know that you're a really resilient being and you have the ability to like detoxify and cleanse. And so don't consider that, oh, I, you know, this is just something from my own belief. I, I personally always try to choose the best water I can. Um, spring water, if I can get it, uh, best like good quality filtration, but not dead water, not distilled water that is devoid of, that actually robs the body of electrolytes in order to like process properly. So I would just try to choose the best water. Victoria's got pretty good water. Uh, maybe not like, you know, other places on the island where they're like, like where we are, the mountains are right there. So there's a really great filtration naturally built into the ecosystem. Um, I would say, you know, go up to Goldstream, get your spring water. Um, uh, that's a beautiful little hike to the spring there. Um, if you really want to do like high vibration water right close here. Um, and then findaspring.com is a website you can go and it'll 
think there's about three, four different springs on the island that are on that website um, that you can find. Yeah. What do you think of alkaline water, Kangen? The Kangen water and the alkaline water. See, we can, this, is, this is why I don't love to talk about water, because we can derail <laughs> the whole evening to talk about water. And I think Kangen and alkaline water is a great spiritual cleanse. But just like I believe raw food is a spiritual alkaline cleanse, uh, is it sustainable long term? Is it, is it uh, the best for us long term? I have my doubts. Um, you know, and I, like I, I went through a raw food diet cleanse period of time. And a lot of people around me that I noticed in that also became ungrounded. Uh, minerals got leached out of their bones and teeth. You know, like, like there were some serious health risks that came along with, with, with an over um, doing that diet. When I, when I did, uh, spent some time with a friend who was really into Kangen, you know, I was like, I have a runny nose from all this Kangen water. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm feeling a little off. Uh, maybe I'm cleansing, but how long do I need to cleanse on the Kangen water before it's really the best for me? Um, so, and I think that it can be like a, a cleanse, a spiritual purge, but if we get too much into the deep alkaline water is that naturally how we would show up is there 10,000 generations of biological wisdom that's built into the genetics of who I am that always drank Kangen water I don't think so right so to me it's it's a way of maybe it's like resetting from a McDonald's diet to a healthy diet or from a bad water to a, a good like detoxification process um, but yeah that's all I have that's more than I should Say about water. <laughs> yeah. You call it distilled water, dead water. Yeah. Well, this. I mean, to me, when you distill water, there's nothing left. Yeah. So it's lost the living essence of what water is, and therefore it's going to be hungry water. It means it's like it, it comes in. Distilled water will come into the body and be like, oh, thank you, life again, and start to suck life out of you into the water. Right? It's not regenerative water for you. Uh, water with more minerals in it and more like vibrationally active water is going to be better for you in general. Um, yeah, so if you're choosing that, like reverse osmosis is far better than distilled kind of thing. If you're looking at like kind of those options of, but you know, like part of the reason why like the Fiji water is actually pretty good is because it's like volcanic water that's gone through, this sort of aerated and put back through mineral process. Some of the mountain spring waters very amazing living waters. And if we look at the longest living people in history, it's all about their water. It's all, it's, it's more than anything, it's about their water. So, um, okay. All right, how was the, um, the immune chocolate. hot chocolate, oh, right? Yeah. And simple, like it didn't take very long to make. We added, in this case, we just upgraded our bodies with the knowledge of another 20 different plants. Um, so, you know, again, as you kind of, and just imagine that what you would start to do with this process is, instead of having a little bit, this becomes your one of your meal replacements in a way. It's just like a nice beverage that adds some calories so it keeps the blood sugar stable. If I'm also considering, like, what I like to do is I'll take chaga tea. We made a super concentrate of chaga tea here. And this is one way you can do it is you can make super concentrates and then add water. You know, um, but what we're going to do is take this super concentrated chaga tea and we're going to turn it into a syrup and make mocktails with it. Um, so that's going to be our fourth drink. But um, let's do one more elixir um, while we have it. Did you do a second one of Sea Breeze? Yes, it should be that one. This one and this and one? The middle one, I think. I actually only used one. Yeah, I did only use one. Yeah. Which we actually only needed one. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's the. Um that's Millie's Sea Breeze. That's definitely Sea Breeze. I know this one for sure is Sea Breeze. Okay. Yeah. So we've got. Yep. Okay. So we got great, great. Okay. This is a fun tea. I love this one. One of our favorite teas. This is like, yeah, our team favorite, one of our favorites. It's just so yummy. And it's a it's an, a homage to the West Coast. Uh, this is a cedar tip and bull kelp tea. <laughs> oh, cedar tips and bull kelp. But we've also got nettles in there, and lemon balm, and spearmint, and a little bit of mugwort, which is our local Artemisia species. Um, so really like a homage to the West Coast. It's very electrolyte rich, it's very digestive, it's uplifting, it's remineralizing, um, and it just tastes great. So um, yeah, we're happy to have the sea breeze. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, and we're gonna make a mood uplifting 
elixir, something that's more kind of gentle for the body. Um, we're going to go with something that's got new tropics in it. We're going to do a matcha mind in this case. There's, a, there's less caffeine in matcha than green tea and far less than black tea. It does give you more focus and clarity. Matcha is the spring tips of tea. And just like any, any like first early buds of a plant, they're less in those bioactives. There's more L-theanine in the matcha. Um, there's more, so yes, it will stimulate a little bit. Um, but it's only like, you know, midnight, so you guys can stay up, no problem. This is gonna keep you till three in the morning. No, no, it's not that, there's, it's not that caffeinated, I'll say. Um, yes, there's more L-theanine to it too. Um, and matcha, it'd be the least um, activating in that way. Um, but the whole concept with it is it, it does help us with focus and clarity. So it's something I would do as a study blend or as a like, wanna get things done um, and uplifting kind of. So we're gonna take the matcha mine. The reason we're using matcha mine today is it's got lion's mane in it. Uh, so it's, this is a mental wow. blend. It's got green tea pollen, which is the pollen of the green tea plant, not the actual plant, which has a lot of antioxidants and is really phytonutrient dense. It's got a lot of B vitamins, a lot of things that would be cofactors for stimulating our neurobiology. So it's got that. It's got a little bit of macuna in it. And macuna is a herb that's kind of like the happy bean. Um, it's got, it's really good for supporting dopamine and um, has a little bit more of this endocrine supportive compounds. It's got moringa, which is a very nutrient dense herb. It's high protein. It's in those super greens. So normally we wouldn't use a lot of super greens, but moringa is quite um, sturdy and can handle a bit of heat where spirulina and chlorella really couldn't. So it is often made into a tea. And so we're gonna add that in. And then is there anything else in here that I'm missing? Is the moringa also in your greens powder blend? It is in our greens powder blend, yeah. And so yeah, no, that's, that's the whole blend. Okay, we'll take that. That'll be our base. Get a spoon. And we'll do this one in another coconut oil. What I'm gonna do is I would personally supercharge the lion's mane. So we're gonna do a little more lion's mane. And then I'm also, I'm a big fan. My very favorite mushroom is reishi. Reishi is grounding. So calming the overwhelm in the body to ground us back in. This is a great herb for insomnia or monkey mind or overwhelm and overthinking or anxiety. Um, it's also be because of that, yeah, that monkey mind of like um, And I would say that one of the best qualities I find with that kind of grounding effect of, of the reishi is that it also works with our cardiovascular system, lowering blood pressure when we're elevated, working with our, our whole HDL, um, LDL balance, and then also things like calming our breath, opening up our lungs for deeper breath and for working with shallow kind of, <coughs> kind of when we're breathing really shallowly. Um, and with that, that means that things like asthma or a lot of allergies, there's antihistamines in this. We put this in our allergy blend, the reishi. Anyway. Which one is this? This is reishi mushroom. Yeah. The red one. Yeah. Red reishi. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. I think it's, they get. No, there we go. I think it's just that they're so gummy that when they get um, liquid into the top and it dries, it kind of creates a... Very dark. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pass around. Now the reishi is got some bitters to it. I'll pass around the reishi, now that it's open, and the lion's mane. And then we're going to add a little bit of our nervines to this blend. Right, so again, we're, we're calming the mind. Yes, we're adding a bit of matcha, but we're gonna calm the mind down with skull cap and passion flower and a little bit of um, my favorite wobbly pop herb, hops. Uh, <laughs> and um, what else do we have in here? Right, we've got, missing one. Yeah, the, ver the blue vervain. Yes, a little bit of valerian. So if you were a person with an active mind and did have a little insomnia, maybe a squirt of that in there, a little bit of water before bed would? Yeah, this would be one. So in small doses, 
The field calm is really good for anxiety and tension. In large doses, it's really good for sleep, right? So, um, and we can, we can have that one go around too. But there we go. So we've got, we've sort of stacked that. We've got our matcha, we've got our lion's mane, we've got our reishi, we've got our field calm. You know, I know we did the, the I would put that uplifted spirits back into this one as well. Um, that would be one I might do. But since we've already tried that, for the sake of trying new things, we'll just go with this. And then from here, I'm gonna stick with the MCT oil, so I only make one of this one. Um, we just did one butter one. And you can, again, when it comes to sweetness level, you can make it to choice. What is your, what is your preferred level of sweetness? Um, I tend to like less sweet than more. Okay. Yeah, so like the question is like, and then that always comes up because like, whoa, what is this guy doing? We got like, we've just drank a hundred different kinds of herbs. Are we going to be okay when we go home tonight? Um, like, am I going to be able to drive? <laughs> uh, you know, in this sense, what we're having is micro samples, you know, so really, yes, no problem. Herbs are not as strong as pharmaceuticals in that way that like, um, but, you know, what we've mostly chose are herbs that are quite gentle. Um, there are certain things with herbal medicine that we want to like not add too many like herbs that are really high in alkaloids to herbs that are high in tannins because they bind together together meaning that they become less bioactive not that there's counterindications um, where a lot of counterindications might come in herbal medicine is if we have herbs like even the St. John's wort or ginkgo um, they shut down cytochrome P450 in the liver, or they like basically use up this biological bio pathway. So the, that stops phase two detoxification in the liver. And this is where most of the counterindications with herbs come from with pharmaceuticals and with that type of thing is that actually we're not breaking down those, those really strong compounds in our body efficiently anymore. And so therefore uh, there's a problem, right? And so when you see counterindications with St. John's work being one of the most classic ones, um, it really comes down to binding up the detoxification pathway in the liver, therefore compromising our body from breaking down other toxins, which will exacerbate the toxic load. Um, so that's kind of the main thing I would say. Um, I, I feel like once you get the swing, oh, I didn't, I don't think I filled this. Once you get the swing of what you're trying to accomplish uh, and what you're looking for, you're not gonna be doing like all of these things. You're gonna pick kind of create a couple of elixirs that you really like and maybe um, switch that out over time. Okay. All right. No. Where did the lid go? Oh. Okay. Ah. Getting lost. Okay. Oh my gosh. See? Right? Oh my goodness. That was great. The lid was not on properly, and um, luckily, that right? <laughs> not so bad. <laughs> like, oh no, I'm damaging the store. Actually, not too bad. But yeah. Okay, so we start on seven again. One. All right. So now you see what can happen. <laughs> Okay. All right. That looks good. Yeah. yeah. I like the color. Nice. Oh, that's really good. Mm. I can almost taste yep, it. it's too good. Uh -huh. Sorry, guys. Uh -huh. I need something to drink on the way home. Okay. Pass this one around. Oh, yeah. And then if we need more of anyone. Okay, so 
Once we try this, what I'll do while we make this is I'm going to make us a kind of a mocktail. Hmm. Oh yeah. And again, you can make this sweeter or less. Um, it's kind of more nutrient dense, this one. I like that. It seems like it's nourishing for the nervous system. This is our kind of nervous system nourishing elixir. And then um, let me just see how concentrated this chaga is. So the next way we're going to work with plant medicine, simply, is make some kind of mocktails. Mmm, okay. So she's brewed up our chaga tea, super concentrated. So we have a nice concentrated chaga tea here. Um, there's a couple of ways we can make a simple syrup. So I wanted to sort of, when it comes to like what we're gonna do with the mocktails, we're gonna make bubbly water drinks. You could start with kombucha, you could start with bubbly water. Uh, if you have a soda stream at home, we got one of those and we're like, this is amazing. And then we went to the store and tried to buy syrups and like, these are horrible. This is not amazing, this is not okay. Um, but we're like, wow, what are we gonna do with the soda stream now? Like all the syrups are crap. And we started putting elderberry syrup in our soda water and we're like, wow. Okay, we felt really sophisticated drinking our elderberry syrup drinks. And then in the summer, we have all this beautiful elderflower. So I go to and harvest that and we make an elderflower cordial on the soda. It's amazing. And we started playing with the bitters and some of the tinctures on the soda. And we're like, wow, this is really the soda pop revolution. We can take herbal medicine and craft it up with bubbly drinks to make a really fun kind of mocktail, party culture, enjoyable experience. And for those who are bold and um, evening crazy wild people, they can add alcohol. <laughs> so so um, you don't have to, right? In the sense that it's beautiful, we can make these drinks that, that feel like we're really um, making a fun festive moment without getting drunk. And we see a real big wave these days into like, you know what, it's sort of like the, the teenagers now, they don't smoke anymore. Or the teenagers when I was a kid, it was like everybody smoked. Um, now, like, like the teenagers don't drink alcohol anymore. They're like, no, we vape or whatever they do. I don't know. They do weird things now. They play video games to get their dopamine hit. But we can play with things like uh, soda and make a nice, really nice mocktail. We're seeing a big um, shift in the industry too towards more of this non-alcoholic options. Just like you can get gluten-free pancakes now at Denny's. You know, <laughs> no. what? I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I haven't been to Denny's. <laughs> I'm just making that up. <laughs> but, but no, but really, you can get gluten-free anything anywhere now. Um, it's sort of that what we're seeing is like, oh, bars even are like, okay, what do we make that's like fun and non-alcoholic? Like you see a lot of kombucha on tap now. Um, anyway, this is a fun way to play with that at home. Make yourself an effervescent drink. So we're gonna take soda water, and what I want to do is teach you how to make a syrup. Really simple syrup, okay? So what you do is you make the most concentrated tea you possibly can. And then we take two parts tea to one part honey. That's gonna be our simple syrup. Um, or we could do maple, or we could do um, sugar if we wanna do. If you're going to do sugar or honey or maple, one of the ways to do it is on the stove top while it's still hot, add in that, that sweetener. Now there's a couple of methods. If you want something to last for a long time, say you're like, I don't want to make this every time. This is like three hours of cooking tea. Why would I want to do that before I make a drink? That seems kind of, you know, counterproductive. You're like, don't worry. Tonight, after we stir for four hours, we're going to have a cocktail. <laughs> so we don't want to do that. So we might want to make it once and then have it stored for a while. In that case, we might want to go with two parts sugar to one part water. And then we're gonna have something, the sugar is gonna actually keep it for a long time. Now the problem with this is it's super, super sweet. And I don't love two parts sugar to one part water. I much prefer one part water to, or no, two parts water to one part sugar. So like a quarter of that sweetness reflectively. So the other way to do that, to lock it in, is you do two parts water, one part sugar, and then you lock it in to preserve it with a bit of alcohol. So you do like a tincture, you're making like a tincture syrup. So in a way, if you want this for a long period of time, you could take, in this case, I've got about 400 milliliters of chaga, as concentrated as we can possibly brew it. And then I might add 200 milliliters of honey and 200 milliliters of alcohol. And that will stay now shelf stable for a good period of time, right? Whereas 
if I just put the 200 milliliters of honey and then I forget about it, it's gonna start to ferment, it's gonna start to mold, it might blow the lid off and become uh, its own version of a wobbly pop. <laughs> so, um, so just, um, yeah, note to the wise, um, if you do wanna lock in a syrup for a period of time, now if you're just making this for tonight, great. I don't need to add the alcohol in it. Um, so in a sense with the mocktail culture, adding a bit of alcohol does defeat, like it becomes a lightly alcoholic drink. Um, but that being said, um, yeah, great question. It depends on what you're trying to do. So when I, one thing I like about herbal medicine is you can really get creative. So if you're making an aphrodisiac blend, you might use tequila, you know? But um, most of the time we use as plain of an alcohol as we can. Um, in BC, it's really hard to get 95% alcohol. That is your like herbal standard tincturing alcohol because then you can reduce it down with water. It's more cost effective. It's really clean and has no flavor or no personality. So you're adding the personality from the herbs. Um, so without being able to get that, we might use a 50% vodka um, as an option. But say I was making a blend that was cooling summer heat. Maybe I did an elderflower cordial. I'm like, I want a cool summer heat and I like the flavor of juniper berry, I might do gin because it naturally is cooling to preserve my, my syrup. Um, say I wanted to warm the body up um, for a cold winter uh, ski trip, I might use brandy because it's warming to the lungs, you know? So you could actually like play with that if you want to. Um, the problem with any kind of like flavored alcohol is it, there's only so much saturation the alcohol can hold of the herbs and so if you add something like a gin or a rum or a tequila or whatever, it's, it's gonna be less, I have less capacity to really add, um, pull out the active compounds on the herbs, you right? You could use grappa. You could use grappa. That's almost 100% alcohol. Yeah, so, so, you know, this isn't a tincturing class, but know that herbal medicine is people's medicine. So simple to do. You could easily make a tincture. Here's how you make a tincture. Pack the jar with herbs. Fill it with alcohol. Shake it, shake it, leave it. Shake it, leave it, shake it, leave it, shake it, leave it for two weeks, pour it off. Now you have tincture, right? Not hard. If you can make oatmeal, you can make a tincture. You know? so, so it's not, even oatmeal is even harder than a tincture. But, but you know, that's a layman's tincture. Anyway, what we're gonna do is make a bit of a syrup. So um, in this case, I'm going to take, I'm gonna make a syrup in a cup here. And I'm just really simply going to take, yeah, I'm gonna do two cups, because then I can do, um, okay. So I know here, and if I had a pen or something, I would just mark it. I could, I could use a measuring cup too, right? Actually, yeah, let's do it with a measuring cup. Let's be a little more precise here, Yarrow. All right, so do one. Two of these. And then I would do one cup of, now we're gonna use the maple. I would normally do honey myself, um, I prefer it. I think honey is, the beauty of it is that it's, especially with something like this, like what these guys carry, cause these guys are awesome, so I totally shop here, is they carry like the best upgraded mountain wildflower honey from your local ecosystem. That's the kind of honey you should be taking. So um, that would be my choice, but for our, our uh, sake of being vegan, we're gonna go with maple. So I know that looked hard, but all I did <laughs> was add a little bit of maple to, and now, of course, little, rinse out my measuring cup. And then I would wanna use a chopstick or something. I'm gonna just use this, because that's what I have. Make sure it's stirred. Now what I've got is a syrup, really simple. That's it. From here, one other way we could do that is we could use like our chaga um, powder because this is an instant water absorption. Put it in to a little bit of water and honey or a little bit of water and sugar mix. Now this syrup, let me just give it a taste and see how it's tasting. Oh yeah, it's pretty mapley. Normally I don't make it with maple. The maple comes through. I'm gonna add a little extra chaga powder to really pop the chaga. Yeah. Little bit of maple in every Canadian vein. 
Every, right? Yeah, I was talking to some Americans and I told them that my, my husky sled wasn't working today and my maple syrup diet was, was really causing me some diabetes. <laughs> they were not sorry for me. They said, go to your healthcare system and complain about it there. Now, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but I, I, I swear, my igloo is just not working out. <laughs> I need some central heating. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. But, all right, so let's see. Yeah, it's still maple-y. <laughs> That's okay. Um, maple is good. It's true. It's good. Okay, so in this case, whoop, really simply, there's a little bit of water in there from the tea. I'm just going to make a simple chaga drink, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and um, typically per cup, I'm gonna add one, like I, I would add one ounce of syrup. Sorry. All right. Now, there's a few things that we can do to this. Okay, let's see how this is. Let's get groovier. Yeah, and you can totally do that. Like you can add a little wintergreen oil to it. Um, you could make a roots, like I could take this adapting gems tea and, uh, and make that into like a nice adaptogen syrup. And again, if I was taking this syrup and actually locking it in, I just add that little bit of alcohol to preserve it. And now I can store it on the shelf. And then I can start to play with like my soda water drinks. From here, so that's the syrup. That's gonna add a little bit of the sweet side to it. Um, what I would probably be doing myself is I would then add some tinctures. So I don't know where the bitters went, but yeah, I would probably play with adding a bit of bitters into this, right? To counterbalance the sweet and really make a nice kind of mocktail type thing. And then if I were wanting to play with like some other things, there's I, I brought a little balm of Gilead, which is your cottonwood buds. Um, I just love how and I'm gonna put a tiny bit in here because it's like this effect, what we'll do in the glass is we'll make, say we have a nice actual cocktail glass. Um, we'll take something like this. I'm just gonna try to knock down some of this foam so you can see the effect. That's, uh, yeah, it's a little foamy. But I'll take a rosinous tincture or something like that and I'll add a couple of drops on the top and it makes this, this kind of cloud of like this wax layer that comes out that really adds a beautiful flavor or color to it. And if we're really wanting to get fancy for people, we'll take a black light to it when we do that. <laughs> and it's like this really psychedelic experience when we're crafting cocktails. Um, so you can use tinctures in that way. I feel um, like I'm watching a YouTube video. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, so it just just getting, like playing with it. So in this case, um, Your bomb is see. Juliet, is that in tincture form? Yeah, and it's something you can make yourself again. Remember what I said, fill the mason jar with your poplar buds add as high proof of an alcohol. In this case, resins really need a high proof. So that's where your grappa or your 95% alcohol really work for resins. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. We need a little bit more of this though. Okay, so, you know, I might also start to play with, okay, do I wanna add a little lemon to this? Or when I'm making these syrups, I'm gonna add like, make some kind of other herbal blend, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna make this into a full, full like kind of with some bitters as well. Okay. What's that? This is the herbal bitters that we tried. Um, the bitters are gonna add a, just a nice little note to it. Yeah, okay. And I'm gonna add a little bit of our uplifted spirits because I just think it have more floral note. And so then what we're making is just a nice little mocktail. Okay. Give it one more stir and try, and then I'll pass it around, I think. So we've made our own syrup. Mm-hmm. Mixed it with bitters. I'll put the rest of this in. Might as well, because it's only a little bit. Okay, and then we have a nice kind of bitter uh, 
chaga. So this is anti-inflammatory with the chaga. It's gonna be a bit of immune support. It's got some uplifting herbs for mind and mood and a bit of bitters to tone the digestive system. And now we can make this, maybe I put some ice in there. Um, I might play with other ingredients if I like. Might rim it with salt. Um, I might do like that. Well, let's try one shot of that bombagillion. We'll put a tiny bit on, see if it does the effect. It might not do it as well with all of the, you ready? Finish. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Yeah, it's playing in there. Um, all right, okay. So just one tiny, tiny Mama Gilead shot. And I think we're good to pass this one around. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, but the, I guess what I'm attempting to do is give you some templates, really. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but if you have kind of a roadmap, you can start to experiment for yourself. Know that you are the only one with the credentials to uh, know what is good for your body. No outside authority, not myself, not a doctor, not a naturopath, knows your body as well as you do, right? So, so do um, take the time to like, take templates like this and play with them. How does it feel in your body? Does this work for me? Are there some easy methods I can start to upgrade my health with? and still have fun. Like part of what we're trying to do today is talk about like, how do I make plant medicine fun for myself? How do I make it enjoyable? How do I find different ways? I know a really simple truth and that is that compliance is king or queen, depending on <laughs> what, where you, but compliance is like if it, the herbs don't work unless we take them. And so if we don't enjoy taking them, we're not gonna have good compliance. So really, how do we bring this into our regular everyday lifestyle? Uh, and that's what this is all about, is crafting.